What's up, everybody? It's your favorite little hound dog, favorite nerd. And today we are looking at the Iron Factory Optics, which is their take on a hound in somewhat of an IDW fashion. This is sent to me by Joel. He's been sending me a couple things recently, so it's nice to have access to some of this stuff. I do appreciate it. He does come with a few accessories, and you know that's where we get started. And there's no time like the present. He comes with two additional sets of hands. In the opening footage, he has closed fist hands. And then here, he has two holding hands left and right and two posing hands left and right. I think the idea of swappable hands is extremely smart for this scale figure, and I like that they're doing it more and more. He comes with this gun. It's painted silver and has some decent sculpt work on it, and it'll hold it just fine in the holding hand. The gun will also peg in to the back of the Jeep. He comes with this shoulder rifle. This has the green plastic and then the silver painted on. Once again, decent sculpt work. That'll tab onto this tabbing system right here. And once you have it on, it'll articulate up and down. The shoulder mount will also peg in to the back of the Jeep. And now let's talk about the figure. So the head, we have the silver paint on the face. We have the blue paint on the eyes and the sculpt looks great. It's on a ball peg. You can get it up to there down to there and then the swivel so all of that is cool yeah the waist swivel we have gunmetal paint and silver paint accents on the chest we have an ab crunch that gets you all the way over just about so that's nice for the shoulders they're on ball pegs you do have this kibble here which does i don't i can't like so you see this and you can cheat this a little bit too because you can kind of move this back piece up and then you can get a little bit more out of it but pretty much for the shoulders you got to go straight out to the side like you can't go back because this stuff ends up hitting against this stuff which is just a you know kind of a cost of doing business unfortunately but it is there now you can also get your swivel of course and i want to say that if maybe i'm reading that wrong no that might be it so it's fair, and for a Legends figure, I think it's you know definitely good enough, but with the improvements that Legends have been making recently, it is kind of a, I do find myself, I mean, you can adjust this, maybe that can, no, nah, it's kind of always going to get in the way a little bit. It's just a little clunky. We do have yellow paint there that looks good, and you know yellow is a hard color to do, and we have silver here as well, and then we have the yellow band around the forearm, so a lot of good stuff. Wrist swivel, obviously, where it pegs in, and we have green paint on the the hand so all good same for the other side we have silver paint accents on the pelvis we got the full van dam we got a little shy of the full monty in the front but i think you know obviously more than you would ever need thigh swivel cut at a cut joint and then we have a knee hinge that gets you 90 degrees we have some silver and red paint accents there silver paint accents on the side on the feet we got some yellow and silver paint accents and then on the back i mean pretty pretty clean so yeah well done let's talk about the ankles before we move on a little bit of a tilt down great tilt up ridiculous rocker kind of a classic rocker as well so that all works sort of splendidly this company kind of knows what they're doing though i think we all can agree size comparison wise there it is with my two standards but i have news for you shout out to kevin r he sent me this tarn as a gift i tried to talk him out of it he wasn't having it he insisted and i appreciate it but he certainly didn't have to do that that being said it will allow for a more modern legend size comparison from here on out so if you're appreciative of that thank kevin in the comments and just for funsies there he is with fans toys willis and let's get him transformed so rotate the shoulder pads towards the back of the arm so that they align you can flip open this piece, which will then allow you to rotate the entire kind of chest assembly up, and then you can tuck his head in. As you do so, you wanna move these pieces up in the back. They're like the side mirrors and stuff, so all of that should make a little bit of sense. And then you also tuck in this piece that has like the steering wheel and everything. So if you're at all familiar with the way a vehicle should be laid out, it should all start to make a little bit of sense and be fairly intuitive. Then close this cover up and make sure that the piece that has the windshield tabs down into it. Then take your side pieces and just align them so that this tab here goes into that groove there. We can find out how Grant Hound got his, uh, his groove back. And we're going to do the same on the other side. Rotate up and tab in. And all the while, 
making sure that this is all aligned and sitting properly. Then to work on the legs, flip your knee pads up and rotate your toes 180. Then on the back, you wanna open up this panel here. There we go. I'm gonna use this spudger for that. And then you wanna rotate kinda of this stuff in as you rotate the foot back. So this is sort of bread and butter transformation stuff here. And then tab in your legs underneath. And you can close these up as well. For your final step, you want to fold down these, these back parts of the feet. Now you can bend here at the ab crunch so that you can kinda of get these really straightened out. And you have these two holes here and then these two pegs. And that's what you need to kind of align in order to get this to work. Let's get this straightened out. And it's really smart. Good night. And then you have the seats and everything. I'll clean them up. We'll take a look at them. This thing is great. I love it. Rolls like a champ. Got the mirrors, got the little steering wheel, got the seats. They did an outstanding job. Look at all the details that come through, all the brake lights and headlights. And like, it's just, it's tremendous. It's tremendous. So I don't have really a whole lot negative to say about this thing. Let me show you what it looks like next to Tiger Tracks. So let's talk about the negatives. And I got news for you. In my opinion, there's only one. And that is the shoulders are slightly limited in terms of range, just because of how kind of chunky they are. And that's it. Plenty of positives though. I hope I have enough battery life. Aside from the shoulders, which is still operating at like an 80%, all the rest of the articulation is operating at 100%. The engineering is amazing, super fun, and doesn't have the tolerance issues that sometimes can plague this company. It's just a smooth, intuitive, smart, clever, good time. Sign me up. The sculpt work per usual is amazing. Comes with just the right amount of accessories to include what in my opinion is a super smart idea and that is the swappable hands for a figure this size that allows you to have very dynamic poses with zero aesthetic issues to pull them off in regard to the hand positioning. Materials feel good. Plenty of paint to go around. Like this is one of those figures that's in the running for me for figure of the year. Certainly legends of the year. It's just really smart, really efficient. They kept it simple, but kept it clever. And as a result, created a really well done thing. And kudos to them for that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Take care.